The Schroeder Octavia facelift is today an auto fuel, your number one resource for in-depth car reviews and your number one community to discuss cars. Today with me with Thomas. Our full review on exterior, interior and driving experience. Today as a sedan as you can see it because we already have covered the, the combi or estate version. You can check that rod out as well in the review with AJ and also had the RS with Holger with the facelift. Today it's more a common Octavia with the new 1 liter 3 cylinder because we also want to show you more affordable cars also with the entry engines for example because this one here may be also interesting for fleet customers and of course private customers who don't want to uh, spend so much money. So let's take a detailed look on all of these aspects. Join us here. Full HD, full screen and full length. Let's go! In the front we have the characteristic Skoda grille, also with this kind of power dome in the front. Still, I think, beautiful and rather, I say, with edge design, some sharp lines in the front. I think it looks good in the front, but now with the facelift, the headlight unit is separated. I think that's a wrong direction for the design. It looked better with one single headlight unit. In the Octavia RS, the frame here around the grille is in black, and then this one here looks as one unit. That looks a little bit better um, when it's just a separation here. Here it really looks like one, two, three different elements. I think that's a little bit messed up from the design. And, by the way, those headlight itself, halogen it starts, and optional, that's new to the face of now, you can also get LED lights as we see them right here now. 4 meter 67 or 15 foot 3 is the total length of this vehicle. You can see here we have the sedan today, it has a falling roof line. To me it looks a little bit more elegant than the combi or estate. But of course the estate is more versatile on the interior. I also find this combination here, white exterior with the black rims, pretty nice. It's a great contrast and we have a beige bright interior here today. Of course some would say, ah, you know, the combination is not too good, but I mean, it's this car is bright on the outside, bright on the inside. It has so much brightness. That was a great quote, wasn't it? So I think the combination would have been better with a nice blue on the outside and then the beige on the interior. But somehow I once bought a car that would also have the white exterior and so the beige interior. So, you know, <laughs> I'm a little bit biased about that. I know some hate it, but I still somehow like it. What about you? Then. Design line here on the height of the door handles and I can already tell you from the outside the special thing is the interior length of 1 meter 78 so almost 180 in meters is the interior length and that's really special overall on the car market this relation of um, interior length and the exterior length really good here also with the Scott Octavia 17 inch are those black rims by the way and the design line carries on over to the rear. And you can see here a nice design uh, feature. The chrome line is raising a little bit. It does look like a small superb, doesn't it? Now to the rear where you can also get those lights with LED technology now. So they look a little bit more modern. The overall design in the rear is rather conservative. That's for sure. Is it already boring? Tell me in the comments. Again with a nice design line right here that marks the dropping down so you can see different light silhouettes also you know from, from this white exterior color that appears in different white tones. And in the rear fortunately no exhaust tip. I think if you don't want to put an uh, exhaust tip in a very prominent way on the lower part then just don't show it at all. Or what do you think? Tell me what you think about the design here of the Škoda Octavia and what you think about the differentiation between sedan and combi or the estate. Which one do you like best?
So let's take a look at the interior together. First of all, this one here is the beige interior package and I really like it. It makes the interior so bright and exclusive. I mean, it's a normal, affordable car and it looks really high class. Also, the interior processing quality is really top notch. Look at this. Wow, this looks like in a big luxury sedan. Normal compact steering wheel. The gauges have somewhat, um, let's say, analog, old school style, a little bit retro with those uh, bright rings around it in the middle part and it's a digital screen for speed, for example, digital speed and consumption. Then you can get uh, fabric seats for the lower trim levels, active and ambition. And then you also get a fabric leatherette mix and this one here for the higher trims, for example, for style and LNK you get Alcantara leatherette mix. So Alcantara on the inside, leatherette on the outside, really high class and still sustainable. With the Octavia, that's my information, it is leatherette on the outside. With the Caroc, it was a little bit different, strangely. In beige, in black it's also possible and in LNK also in brown. So different choices you have here and well done, very well executed. And let's get inside. Fairly easy entry and it feels so much just like normal. It's a basically a standard vehicle setup, but the seats are really super comfortable. There, by the way, are also sport seats available. You can go for them optionally. And then there are, of course, those um, special RS sport seats too. Steering wheel, quite compact. You can very well change it. Look how how's the variation. You can really adjust very well on the process is also really smooth. Good overview, I can already see that here. This one is also equipped with the um, electric seat controls with three memory slots as well. It's handy when you, for example, wife and husband driving the car, have different, different setup, you just press one and two. One, of course, for a lady, two for the gentleman. Also electric lumbar support. And there's really so much room here already in the front. Excellent also for tall drivers. I'm one means 86 or six foot one. Even with a panoramic roof, it would still be working. So this one here also sets a standard for the compact segment. Although even from the room we have here, it indeed sits somewhere between compact and the midsize segment. You can just not often stress it enough. And some storage space here on the left side, just a very small bin. What would you actually use it for? And now to the interior overview. As you see it also the driver here. A <laughs> nice visualization when you start the infotainment screen. I've just wiped it with the microfiber. It is prone to fingerprints, that's for sure. This top glass screen, so always wiping with the microfiber. And then of course it also looks high class with this glass view. Um, if you think about different options, there are the 6.5 inch swing system the 8-inch Bolero, it's a little bit bigger than this one here. Um, sorry, with the Bolero, it's the Amundsen navigation system, if you put it optionally. And this one then here is the 9.2-inch Columbus that directly also comes with this GPS. Soon more details to that. Then, compact steering wheel, go to drive. Six-speed manual gearbox we have here. The climate unit is easily accessible from the driver's part. Still a classic deal. So some you know, still want to have that in a very classic style. Good idea also that not everything is bright. That they have the lower part here. It's even soft touch, by the way. And also top part soft touch. This one here should be black because then you're not so much blinded by the light. With the bright dashboards, it's too much reflecting everything. And glove box quite spacious and also can be cooled. Small middle mirror and the top mirror actually also quite handy, can be slided for both sides here, right there. Overall, such a well thought out interior, nothing super fancy, just very functional as it should be. USB port, aux in, and in the front part here, you can also inductively charge your phone. So what about this new infotainment system that comes with the facelift? Of course, it's more impressive, it's bigger, better to see, 
super responsive you see here the, you know the responsive times here is really excellent and the GPS is also good and easy then you have this menu view where you have um, you know this app view basically for the most important function telephone either via Bluetooth connect or also with the smart link then you have Apple CarPlay and Auto and Mirror link that also works effortlessly home screen would be individually you can set it for example that um, GPS is always there and that here's the telephone function but you can also adjust it um, as you like the, those are the main functions for sure traffic view is also available um, you can also put your uh, <laughs> favorite pictures in here from USB for example and volume can be adjusted right here there are no really hard buttons left some people like that this cleanness some others want to still have buttons however the volume you can also adjust at the steering wheel so that's not too bad then in the middle console you have this adapter here for example to put the key in or the smartphone um, but then we have shallow beverage holders they're a little bit small and shallow that's to criticize i think the middle armrest is very fixedly attached also a meal pretty strong and then some more storage space underneath and now what about the rear seats and this is really the strength of the Skoda Octavia wow you can even put a whole fist in front of my knees although I would be driving so that's really a very good package you have so much room in here how much else do you need and headroom wise it's also pretty good here um, the sedan drops a little bit but still it's you know plenty of room only if you're super 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 tall and then leaning backward of course the estate would have or the combi would have a little bit more headroom when you you know, go to the to the falling roof you know think about that one but still if you prefer a sedan look you don't have to make any compromises here and isofix also on the outer seats you can also flip the seats already from here in a one third two third split like this but of course we can also show you it from behind and by the way here also in the rear you have this nice mix from the Alcantara and the leather red it looks so high class here even if you sit in the rear so now to the trunk this one here the sedan still has this hatch opening and that leaves you a lot of flexibility still look at how wide it opens small net underneath you can of course also remove this cover then intelligent solutions for example here you can put out this um, separating um, well thing however you call that and then for example split it right here and then you can secure a backpack or you know a trolley or for example or even make it in the corner um, to secure smaller things it's just an easy but again clever solution then you can also easily flip those seats with those levers and then wow look at that so and this is really special about 600 to 1600 liters um, this one here sedan just 20 liters difference in the normal trunk but then if you have flipped everything and the total until the height because you lose the height here of course then it's about 150 liters difference to the estate but for sure one of the best usable sedans so engine wise this is a new one liter three cylinder turbo engine with 115 horsepower will be exciting drive the one look at how small it is in the engine bay there's also 1.2 liter available with 86 horsepower and 1.4 with 150 and 1.8 with 180 this one can also be combined with all-wheel drive and in the rs the 2 liter tsi with 230 or 245 horsepower and diesel side 1.6 with 90 or 115 horsepower or a 2 liter with 150 or 184 horsepower the latter ones also be combinable with a wd and there's also the g-tech the cng engine 1.4 with 110 horsepower So, the driving part here today with the 
one liter three cylinder 115 horsepower we'll have a city driving part see how it performs here we also go to the motorway and the countryside so we have everything covered the acceleration figure is about 10 seconds to 100 kilometers an hour or 62 miles an hour so not too fast but also not too slow as I said earlier there are way bigger engines for this vehicle available this one here however if you really want to save some money because it is cheap in the entry price with this engine does it also save fuel mm, well as I said some time before often it can make sense to go for a bigger engine and to run it at lower rpm to have a better consumption than actually the small engine with running for high rpm however if you want to drive this one fuel saving you can score something six six and a half liters also with city traffic and i think that's reasonably good then the general driving characteristic is very calm sovereign you do not really feel anymore like being in a compact vehicle this one here feels like it is a segment above it feels like you are driving a mid-size segment car indeed lengthwise it sits between those segments uh, those segments and therefore it's quite often a very clever choice indeed so you do not miss for example you know a Volkswagen Passat, Mercedes C-Class, BMW 3 Series which would be mid-size segment this one here already gives you the driving comfort long-term driving comfort also for tall drivers no problem the seats are really, really great the overview to the sides is really good just as the mirror they've made it slimmer for design reasons that limits the view to the rear just a little bit other than that really convincing in the sovereignty and the riding calmness with the facelift they have also worked on the suspension even in a normal suspension as the track was also a little bit wider it's a little bit calmer on the road um, you know one problem of the Octava is always that there are some low frequency sounds from the rear axle when you go over potholes or bumps this is still, still somewhat there but increased if you compare it to the pre facelift even better it would be with the DCC the optional dynamic chassis control which then works even more adaptive and you can also set it from comfort to sport we tested this one also in the review earlier with Holger and AJ and that was probably you know the, the best they've put in the Octavia now so if you ask me the standard suspension is already good you can surely live with that that's the reason also we test it today without the DCC however if you want to have even more comfort and also the choice to drive sportier from time to time then the DCC is also a, a useful option and so not a must buy but really not only a nice to have but a good to have for sure so DCC is something that works pretty well here but also you know if you think you buying a, a base Octavia for example it's not too bad and then when you're not going for a very very high spec you also have a very good price performance ratio being stuck in traffic here a little bit is also good to test clutch and the manual gearbox is it really annoying does it work smoothly and it does the latter because there's hardly any resistance when you shift through the gears actually not too long shifting ways as well so i really like that um, you know i do prefer automatic gearboxes just for comfort reasons but this one here if you want to save some money again is also very good six speed manual and for here for the uh, because this one is a newer engine the, the small three cylinder six speed manual manual or the seven speed dsg some of the older engines 
they still have the uh, you know the gearboxes with one gear less so five speed manual or the six speed DSG so you can watch out uh, for that one and then also see which one is a rather you know rather an older engine or which one is uh, among the newer engines here for example in traffic now would be uh, really useful to have the automatic transmission then uh, so higher here I have to clutch in and out and stuff um, by the way the foot can be also you know put next to the clutch very well and rest on it when you're driving longer times on the, on the autobahn for example and the same is also for the DSG if you have the automatic transmission then it also uh, you know gives you really comfortable point to, to put your foot on right next to that so and we are stuck in traffic here a little bit so I'll make some editing cuts here for you and see you in a bit. So, back again. A little bit less traffic here now. And you can really work with this three cylinder engine. It also has this very interesting sound. I've noticed that before. No matter if you have the turbo version, non turbo version, here with the turbo. Actually, it sounds more powerful than the four cylinder. Strange, isn't it? So the sound isn't isn't too bad. The sound insulation here is overall also pretty good. We will soon also experience on the, on the motorway when we're driving a little faster. You know the Octavia RS had this super progressive steering, a sporty steering, but already in the base model, it reacts very well. It's extremely precise for normal standard car and you don't have to work with it too much so when you're parking in and out or at the same time when you want to drive a little sportier i really like the steering characteristic here so it feels it feels natural but light enough and sporty at the very same time and now let's push it a little bit when we're going uphill now we have to give it some more rpms but you see due to the turbo there's still always something happening amazing how it can get such a power out of from one liter of displacement so 60 kilometers an hour third gear 80 90 so you see even going on the motorway that works quite well so even on the motorway you are just fine with this engine maybe when you're driving with lots of people and full pack with luggage all the time. It's maybe not the most clever idea. Then also assistance systems. ACC is optionally available, adaptive cruise control. The front assist, autonomous emergency brake, comes with the middle trim level with, um, with ambition. Sadly, not with the entry trim level. That's bad. Please fix that. Fix that, Koda. Skoda. <laughs> And then there's the blind spot monitor option available for the side mirrors. Check it here. And small light flashes. <coughs> Sorry. And then people also, even if they're overtaking you from blind spot, you do see that it's happening. Even now at about 100 kilometers an hour, it's reasonable sign in here. The suspension is doing a good job. The car is still very stable, also when I'm moving the steering wheel a little bit faster than that. It's also a great motorway car for sure. And the thing is really that the more you test this vehicle, you, you realize it is a very, very good car. And everything, you know, in different elements above this here is excellent. And the thing is, you get this one here for a very good price performance ratio so it's quite often that if you want for example now like that driving comfort if you want to go put it from very good to excellent you usually have to pay double the price so it's not you know in steady levels so this one here basically to me is a benchmark for a car for a very good car with a with an excellent price performance ratio and indeed you know you, there aren't many wishes left when you drive this vehicle 
You know, you could always say, yeah, you have more riding comfort with an air suspension. Again, think about what vehicles you have to get to get the air suspension and what extra price do you have to pay for that. And then again is the question, is it really worth it? So if you think pure, pure logic, actually hardly any other vehicle above this one here is worth the money if you want to maintain this price performance ratio. You feel so comfortable, so at ease, also all the time really in control because it has basically also the right size. It's not too big, it's not too small. Here enough power even with the small engines. See here when you want to do some slalom, look at how the car reacts on the steering wheel. Smooth enough, but sporty when you need it. I don't have any suspension options here, but actually I, I don't need it, so I'm actually totally fine by driving this one here. It doesn't have those super fancy digital instruments yet as well, but even those, you know, you have a digital speedometer here, as I'm also seeing right now, and that's also fine. Uh, one thing, I really had to search for it, that does annoy me a little bit. Um, I first thought that the steering wheel was maybe a little wrongly calibrated. So you know sometimes it happens because they're electronically calibrated that they're not exactly straight and when you go to, you know, going straight like this, the car tries to to the right and you have to steer a little bit left and it goes straight. But meanwhile I think the cockpit, you know, as the instruments are oriented, are not exactly straight, but just a little offset. I'm not sure, maybe it has something to do with the, you know, you see also the dashboard, I think is on the right side, a little bit lower than on the, on the left side. Maybe it's something to do with driving ergonomics, but that is maybe also creating my impression that the steering wheel would be just slightly offset. So for example, here now, I would be driving like this and I drive to the right, you know. That would be when the steering wheel is in the line to the instrument. But then again, if you think about when the steering wheel is aligned to the road, it's, you know, it's more even. However, I will still tell them and maybe ask if they would maybe for the next passing journalist recalibrate the steering wheel. I think that could maybe be a good idea. It's not like, you know, in past time that it's all mechanical. This is usually an electronic thing. But if you have experienced uh, something like this with your Škoda Octavia, I would like to know for sure. That would be you know, an interesting exchange here because we are also looking always forward to real owner comments that future buyers can then again learn even more from them. Here again, getting a little bit more dynamic driving. It is really also a fun car to drive and even in the base version. So you not necessarily need the RS to have fun driving the Škoda Octavia. I think that's to me always very important that you do not need the highest trim, the highest spec, not having to spend too much money, only that the car would be good or fun or so. Shifting back, enough power also from lower RPM regions, direct steering, the suspension gives you enough feedback, it's not tilting too much without losing comfort, that's how it's done. So. In all the driving aspects here, again, a very convincing ride with the Škoda Octavia. The facelift has made it even a little bit better. As a last question, shall I directly sell my pre-facelift Škoda Octavia to get this one here? Well, I think it's not really worth to switch it, switch it immediately. It's not that big of a difference. So. You're just fine with your pre face of Octavia for sure. However, if you're switching anyway because your lease is getting renewed, for example, or um, you know, for whatever reason you want to want to buy the new car anyway, it does everything better basically, and it is notable from the you know the changes of the face that they've done, and I think that's also something 
something very important and to look forward to maybe, maybe have the switch and you know as you get those new exterior lights the new headlamps which some don't like at least you know that driving wise you do get something better even in the base versions so and some more sport corners it's really also although it doesn't look like that from the outside rather a sporty companion in this compact segment or compact mid-size mix but the most important thing for me is again the comfort you do not need any more length or any bigger size to get more comfort to me if I would step a segment down then I do lose comfort as a tall driver but here if I drive this one here or you know a car that is maybe uh, 40 centimeters longer it doesn't do any big change anymore so this one is also in, in basically in every aspect, at, not at the very top, but at a very, very good level. And now to our conclusion for today, Škoda Octavia facelift. I really like the sedan concept here. It looks elegant and it still has this hatch opening and has so much room inside. So there's a good compromise, not with this small separate hatch where you just have this whole a small hole to put things in here also a wide opening very well done and then you know if you want to have even more comfort you can have the estate i would also go for the estate although i prefer the sedan look i would take the estate that i can easier throw my bicycle in the rear the exterior yeah with the, with the headlamps i think most of us agree that this is basically a fail the headlamps before looked indeed better it will change with the only generation of the Octavia again. Still, the exterior is somehow good. It's not a very exciting exterior, that's not. But overall, I think pleasing, we could agree on that. Also, with the wider track, it looks better that, you know, the uh, wheels in the arches are not too much offset. The interior, really nice, especially in the beige trim here, looks so bright and looks so classy and it is indeed high class from the processing or from the build quality on the interior and that's again with this price performance aspect you get. And of course so much room here on the interior and I think the package is really excellent considering the length on the outside and room on the interior and again one of the best price performance vehicle on the market so this is a vehicle I can really, really recommend. Of course, I want to hear your feedback. If you're an Octavia customer, maybe a future customer, share your experience, share your thoughts with us, and also tune in to the other Octavia reviews. We will link them here in the comments and in also the video description. So check those ones out as well. Thank you so much for watching and please keep supporting Autogefühl.